Adult education occupies a unique place in the state's education system in that it serves adult learners but consists of subject matter at, at the elementary, secondary level. The primary purpose of adult education is to serve undereducated and underskilled adults with the basic knowledge and skills they need to participate in civic life and become economically self-sufficient. Adult schools, which are run by school districts and the California Community Colleges, are the state's main providers of adult education. Other providers include county libraries and community-based organizations. Adult schools were the first to provide adult education in the state, in fact, back in 1856 in San Francisco. In the 1940s, community colleges began offering adult education to supplement their traditional mission of academic and vocational instruction at the lower division collegiate level. At the time, both adult schools and community colleges were under the authority uh, governance umbrella of the State Board of Education. In the late 1960s and early 1970s, the legislature moved governance authority from, for the community colleges out from under the State Board of Education to a new Board of Governors of the community college system. This split raised the question of which segment, the school districts, the K-12 system, or the community colleges should have responsibility for adult education. Despite a lawsuit in the 1990s and numerous attempts by the state, to address this governance issue, this question has remained outstanding for the last several years. The roles of and responsibilities for adult education have become even more clouded in recent years as the legislature has allowed school districts to use for any educational purpose general fund monies that previously had been dedicated to adult education. As a result of this, funding levels for adult education have declined and the number of adult schools has reduced, been reduced from 335 just a few years ago to about 300 today. Our review finds that adult education has some key strengths, but also many weaknesses. Some key strengths include having two large segments with extensive experience working with adult learners, and the existence of an innovative funding mechanism that allocates federal funds to adult education providers based on student outcomes, such as learning gains. There are a number of weaknesses, however. First is uh, broad and ill-defined instructional areas for adult education. I mentioned at the beginning that adult education serves students such as uh, those learning to speak English, but it also serves uh, older adults who are wanting to take ceramics for personal enrichment. Community colleges uh, blur lines between adult education and collegiate education. For example, uh, community colleges uh, often award college credit for material which is at secondary or even elementary school levels. There's also a number of inconsistent and conflicting statutes relating to adult education that treats adult schools and community colleges in very different ways. This includes uh, funding, the funding levels that adult schools and com community colleges receive, the minimum qualifications for faculty to teach in adult schools and community colleges, the fees that students pay can differ a great deal depending on whether the student happens to go to an adult school or a community college, and also there are a number of assessment and placement policies that are conflicting between adult schools and community colleges. In addition, there's a widespread lack of cooperation and coordination among adult education providers. There's a tremendous potential if the providers work together to offer a comprehensive uh, system of adult education, but that's just not happening right now. It's not extensive and expense, extensive as it needs to be. Finally, there's limited data on adult education. It makes it very difficult for lawmakers, practitioners, to fully evaluate the system. We lack basic data on questions such as how many students are enrolled in adult education, how much funding goes to adult education, how many students graduate with a high school diploma or GED, and how do these students do once they finish? What is their salary, for example? We don't have this data right now. It's not comprehensive. Given these numerous shortcomings, 
we recommend comprehensive restructuring of adult education in the state. And we believe the legislature can play a, an important role in guiding the development of such a new system. We find that adult schools and community colleges each have comparative advantages. The 112 colleges that make up the California community college system, for example, serve adult learners almost exclusively and offer a continuum of education and training through the sophomore year of college. Adult schools uh, are even more uh, geographically dispersed throughout the state. There are, even with budget cuts, there's around 300 adult schools, and they often provide instruction that is particularly accessible to adult learners. The new system we recommend takes into account these factors and leverages the strengths of each segment. Specifically, we recommend the following. First, a state-subsidized system that is focused on adult education's core mission. Second, common statewide definitions that differentiate between adult education and collegiate education. Third, a common set of policies for adult schools and community colleges relating to faculty qualifications, student fees, and student assessment. Fourth, a dedicated stream of funding for adult education that creates incentives for cooperation among adult schools and community colleges, and the creation of a allocation formula for new monies that goes out based on regional needs. And fifth, an integrated student data system which tracks student outcomes. Taken together, we believe our recommendations would improve adult education in the state by making it more focused, coherent, collaborative, responsive to local needs, and accountable to the public.